Today we're going to be taking a look at the Books Tab Ultra C Pro, a new flagship tablet PC from Books that's going to be sitting alongside the Note Air 3C and the not too distantly released Books Tab Ultra C. Which should you buy and how are they different? Let's dig into all of that in today's video. If you're new around here, my name is Brandon and on this channel I share practical tips to help you improve your focus and creativity. If that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on the videos that I post here every other week. All right, back to the video. This is the new box. Seems like it has sort of a textured feel to it. Let's uh, try and bust into it. Text is really small this time around, but the things that you need to be aware of this time around are slightly faster processor. So it goes to 2.8 gigahertz instead of the 2.4 that was on the Tab Ultra C. Uh, the big difference here is going to be Android 12 versus Android 11 on the Ultra C. The Books Note Air 3C was the first Books device that had Android 12, so that's still a relatively new thing, and I think we'll expect to see that on all Books tablets moving forward. Uh, other differences are a completely different case, this time including a trackpad, which we'll take a look at it here in just a moment, um, a bump in RAM to 6 gigabytes of RAM, and then the storage goes to 128 gigs. Um, other changes are a set of side buttons. Let's uh, take a look and compare. Go ahead and get that booting up and we'll take a look inside the box. I think we'll know what to expect. We should get a Pen Pro 2. Yes. Pen Pro 2. A tool for removing the micro SD card and a USB B to C, if I were to guess. Yeah, USB 3, B end, and uh, C on the other side. Let's pick this thing up and take a look. Feels like a Tab Ultra C. Um, maybe a little bit lighter. Let me uh, grab them side by side. Yeah, it's lighter. But still has some heft to it. It's definitely not as light as the Note Air 3C. Let's grab that. Yeah. So the Note Air 3C is going to be a little bit wider. Sorry, this is always a little tough to show. It's going to be a little bit wider uh, and a little bit thinner. I'll show you the other direction. And I think my Note Air, oh, oh, uh, yeah, I think my Note Air may have a little bit of a, a bend to it. Nothing that I've noticed, but yeah, huh. Never really picked up on that. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, feels pretty similar to the Tab Ultra C that I'm used to. Again, still going to wobble if you don't use the case. But I think practically speaking, if you're paying the premium for the Tab Ultra C, or the Tab Ultra C Pro in this case, you're probably going to use it in its case. Otherwise, I think you'd probably take the Note Air 3C. This form factor is really nice for note taking and is completely flat across the back, which if your primary use case is note taking, that's probably the way to go. Let's go ahead and boot it up. While we're doing that, let's also compare the sizes between 
these two devices. All right, so that's setting itself up. So on the front is the Tab Ultra C, and on the back is the Tab Ultra C Pro. So from a height and width perspective, almost identical. I think perhaps actually identical. We're, we're sub millimeter difference if they are different. Uh, when it comes to thickness, however, the new Ultra C Pro is a little bit thinner. And you feel that probably more in weight than in thickness difference. Uh, the other big difference here are these side buttons, which come in really handy on the Palma. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get to them where they are here on the Ultra C Pro, but they're a welcome addition nonetheless. You're gonna have the touch sensor button uh, and that's all gonna be the same. The speaker grill is a little different. And then the pogo pins moved from the bottom on the Tab Ultra C to on the back on the Tab Ultra C Pro, which I think is a welcome addition. It's not something I picked up on in my initial unboxing, but after using the Tab Ultra C for quite some time, I, I think this is gonna be a much better position for those pins. Okay, so they, they call the, the camera the Snapdragon camera. Is this some integration with Qualcomm directly? I know that the chip in this device is a Qualcomm Snapdragon, but I'm surprised to see that the camera app is called that. Get through here. Oh yeah, this is a different camera app. Let me find something worth taking a picture of. Here, for the sake of getting us started. Okay. So I think we're gonna get a better camera app this time around. Oh. It doesn't re auto refresh the way the Note Air does. So one of the things I realized I love about the Note Air 3C is if you tap the fingerprint sensor, it'll actually do a full full page refresh, which is really nice. But overall, I think this camera is an improvement over the other one. Um, the quality on the other camera is not not great. The other difference here is we have a flash, so. I don't know that I need a flash for this, but let's try this out and see if we can tell. <laughs> I don't think that's quite what I wanted, um, but I'm sure you can dial that in at a little bit better level than what we get by default here. Let's take a quick look at the note taking capabilities and see how it feels next to the recently released Note Air 3C. Let's create a new notepad here. So we have a fresh notepad on either. Note that I'm running my Note Air 3C in a warmer configuration. We can tweak these to match. I'm fairly certain these devices actually have the same screen, so we shouldn't notice any major differences there. They should look identical. Where we will probably feel a difference is in the screen feel. So let me use the provided pen uh, right across here. Nice kind of soft felt marker feel. Feels great. Love that. Might get a nice little sound here. Let me try and give you a sound test. All right, and then let's go over to the Note Air 3C. So this is a five. Let's switch this also to a five. Now let's try that. Yeah, I think it feels good. I don't have any real issues with it. If I had to choose between the two, I prefer the feel of the Note Air 3C just because it has that paper-like style screen protector on it. 
it gives a more pen and paper type feel. But the Ultra C Pro feels good too. Um, it still doesn't feel like writing on a screen, uh, so that's really nice. It's not like writing on an iPad, um, but just not quite as good as the Note Air 3C. Again, I think if your primary use case is note taking, I probably lean more towards this device. Feels good though, no, no issues there. Let me also compare it to the Tab Ultra C and see if I feel any differences there. And I believe these devices also run the same screen, so we can make these match as well. Again, still get a little wobble. So this is set to four, Let's set it to a five. Oh, I got that little delay that I sometimes get. Hold on, what did I change? I changed the font. Oh, you get that little delay here too on brush change, but it's not nearly as obvious. All right, so set it to four, set it to five. Oh, set it to four again, set it to five. Yeah, there's a little delay when you first write after you change brush widths, but I noticed it way more over here. Let me try it over again. Yeah, you feel it more on the Tab Ultra C than you do on the Tab Ultra C Pro. Not something to stress about, just minor annoyance. All right, so let's write. Feels good. Actually, I mean, I think this is partially just this device is brand new and the screen is completely clean. It doesn't have any skin oils on it but it's a little bit grippier at the moment. As soon as I rub my hand against it, it'll it'll change. Oh, I accidentally took a screenshot. Let's uh, delete that. Let's get a fresh page. Overall, feels good. No complaints there, but I do want to get it inside of its case because I think that's, again, the reason why you'd probably splurge for this device over a Note Air 3C. So I'm gonna put both of them in their cases and then we can look at those side by side. First, the Tab Ultra C. Tab Ultra C in its case. And then let's go ahead and open up the new 10.3 inch keyboard cover only for the Tab Ultra C Pro. Folding stand, trackpad, has pogo pins. This one is in English, is magnetic, and it has wake up mode. It's got this pretty little gloss print on it. Let's open that up. Oh, okay, this is just like a little filler. Step one, open it. Step two, lay device in. Step three, oh, lay device in is step three. Step four, use it. Okay, this is substantial. Let's take a look. Line up the pogo pins. That fits in there nice and strongly. Do you want to automatically rotate to landscape when the keyboard is connected? Yes, please. Okay. works differently this year. All right, so the pogo pins will become, will come disconnected if I do that. Oh, is this just lay back? Oh, that's really nice. Oh, okay. Very different, very different. Okay, let me explain. So on the Tab Ultra C, 
if you were to put it in the keyboard configuration, you could only have it at one level. So whatever level it took to get into those pogo pins is what you got. <laughs> There's just no real adjustment here. Hopefully you can see that. It just, that was the one angle you got. On the Tab Ultra C Pro, it is like a, a flex design. So it always stays in contact here and you bend this to get the angle that you want. So if you want it to lay back a little bit more like this, you do that. If you want it to sit up a little more, bend it a little further. There is a limit to how upright you can go, but it's pretty good. Okay, let's, uh, let's peel this little plastic off. Ooh, okay, so you have a mouse. I don't know if you'd want a mouse. Like it, there's a little delay. I mean, just there's no getting around the fact that ink has delay. It's not so bad for typing. For mouse movement, I don't know. I can click on it. I can go home with a three finger gesture. Oh, I can go back to the app I was on. So I can go back. That's kind of cool. Tap on my notebook. I don't know that I would really do much, if anything, with the notebook in this format. Although, whoa, ended up with eight pages. <laughs> How did I do that? So there's no real haptic feedback when you tap on the trackpad and it, I mean, it kind of presses down, but doesn't really seem like it wants to. Although the more I press it, the more it seems like it's okay with it. Probably just needs to wear in a little bit, but it's a little stiff out of the box. Yeah, it's getting better, but a little stiff at first. So I can swipe up like that. I can, I need to relook at these gestures because I know that they exist. Oh wait, we have right click now. So if I two finger click, oh, it's only in certain spots. I'm not sure about that. That's interesting. See if I can browse the web here and it feel all right. Typing feels plenty fast. That feels good. Oh, I don't have internet yet. The keyboard cover seems like an improvement, like the ability to set it to different levels of height adjustment is a big improvement. Also not having to worry about whether the pogo pins are gonna become disconnected is another nice benefit. Nice improvement. Let's go ahead and log into Wi-Fi. I'll be right back. All right, we are connected now. Three finger swipe to go back. ESPN loads. Scrolling is nice and snappy. I mean, actually the mouse here doesn't even feel that bad. For whatever reason, it felt slower on the Android home screen. Let me go home. Yeah, it's it's slower on the home screen than it is in the apps. And I'm not really sure why that would be. Like if I get to the Neo browser, snappy. There must be something with the repaint levels that they have in this app versus on the home screen. Inside this app, feels great. 
no, no concerns there. Definitely gonna have to wear in this trackpad though. Very, very stiff. It's funny, it's loosened up towards the bottom, but the top is actually, it must hinge there. So what's happening is at the bottom of the trackpad, there's a lot of movement and feedback. Sorry, I didn't mean to open that ad. Let's get out of there. So there's a lot of movement and feedback towards the bottom of the trackpad. And even to about halfway, but that top third doesn't click. You can't like, you get, I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't register the click. Actually, it doesn't register the click. Hold on. So that's the bottom half. The bottom half you can click. The top half, yeah. You can't click on this final third. I mean, if you really tap at it, you can, but like as far as trying to click and drag, yeah, it won't, it won't click and drag up there. You could like triple tap probably, and that would work, but just a little tough to use at the top. I think that's something you get used to once you have it, but you would expect that area to be a little bit more responsive. With that said, the book super refresh has come a long way from the Note Air 2. And uh, the fact that I can use this on a browser and it feel really good is pretty nice. Um, I think if you're not someone who codes that you maybe just use a browser or write Word documents, maybe make a presentation or two, you could probably get away with this as a computer that you walk around with on a daily basis. I'm still curious to see if we'll ever get a true Windows tablet from books. They call this a tablet PC, and I get a little stuck on what is the difference between this and this other than the keyboard cover. Like, this is a PC, but this isn't. Mm, their internals are pretty much the same. I mean, subtle differences, but the apps that they can run, pretty much the same. The biggest difference is a mouse and keyboard. Does that make it a PC? Mm, I'm not so sure. You can put a Bluetooth keyboard on this. I don't know if you can put a mouse on it. I don't know that I want a mouse on it. But if you just want to be able to type, they're not that different. So, books. Will we ever get a Windows tablet that is a true PC, please? Maybe, I don't know, think about it. Maybe it's not as good an idea as it sounds to me, but that would get really, really interesting. Looks like there might be an update. Again, mouse is much more sluggish on the book's home screen than it is in actual apps, which I find really interesting. There is an update. Doesn't look like anything related to what we're dealing with right now. All right, what is the weight difference between these two? Because I think I've made my point pretty clear. If you don't need an on-the-go device that goes into this nice little form factor that has a trackpad and a keyboard that you just fold up and you go and you take with you, then you're probably gonna use the Note Air 3C. But let's say you do need that. You do want a keyboard that's built into the device. Your options are Tab Ultra C at 599 or the Tab Ultra C Pro at 649. So 50 bucks difference. I've got an idea for how I feel about this. Let's check one other thing. What is the price of the Note Air 3C? Note Air 3C, $499. Okay, so these two devices are both 
And if I have to choose between between these two devices, both the same price, Node Air 3C 499, Tab Ultra C 499, Node Air 3C all day, every day. If you want a keyboard, you can use a Bluetooth keyboard. Just put it in the case. Um, at 499, this one's a no-brainer for me. All right, jumping to 649 versus 499. Let's say Node Air 3C is not your not your thing. You want this case or some version of this case and you need a keyboard. Note that this one's a lot smaller. Um, let's do key travel. Key travel feels the same. Uh, key sizing. These are a little bit longer. So because this takes up the full length, the keys, at least the modifiers, are a little bit taller. I think the numbers uh, also are a little bit taller. Let me double check. Yeah, yeah, numbers are taller. The actual keys themselves, the regular keys, look the same. Yeah, they look the same. Yeah, those are the same. I like the way this is flush versus this one's got a very short lip and this, I mean, they have a similar edge over here, but this little lip right here is a little different. I like that my palms rest on the same thing that my fingers are touching on the keys. Whereas this one, my palm rests on the table. It has to sit up a little bit. If you want the keyboard and the trackpad, trackpad optional, you have to go with the newer one. One, because of the form factor. I think they've improved this design language a lot. This is a much better physical experience. Um, but two, you get Android 12 on this, whereas this one stops at Android 11. Didn't come out that long ago. Uh, Books is riding a thin line of trust here around a device that came out, what, six months ago, maybe eight months ago? has already been replaced and has a, a different software version in the Android version that is separating them. Slippery slope. Same thing with the Tab Ultra. Tab Ultra is right about a year old and there have been two iterations on it. I think if I was a Tab Ultra owner, uh, that, that doesn't feel so great. But with that said, they are making good improvements. Like this physical design is much improved much, much improved. Like this hinge, so much better. Um, so it's not like they're just locking you out behind uh, an Android version. They are innovating here. We do get volume buttons. Um, they moved the pogo pin. Um, I mean, would have been great if they realized the pogo pin there wasn't such a great idea anyway, but they didn't stick with it. They, they fixed it. They improved it. And I think that's something that's consistent across books is they are improving each iteration that they do, even if there are a lot of iterations. So that's probably a good place to conclude. The Books Tab Ultra C Pro. I think it's actually properly named. It is the Books Tab Ultra C and then improved in some significant ways. I think the keyboard cover is a significant upgrade. And I think for just about all users, this is the one you should buy if you're set on getting a Tab Ultra C. Um, I think the, the really tricky piece here is gonna be deciding between the Tab Ultra C Pro and the Note Air 3C. Again, both have Android 12, both have almost the same screen. Actually, they both have the same screen. You're gonna probably get a little bit better battery life out of the Tab Ultra C Pro because it does have a little bit bigger battery. Let me get you the exact number so I'm not speculating. Note Air 3C has a 3,700 milliamp battery, which I believe is the same that's been in all of the Note Air devices. On the Books Tab Ultra C Pro, that gets a bump up to 4,600 milliamps. The screen is the same size, so I think you're gonna see that ratio ratchet up um, and you should see improved battery life on the Tab Ultra C Pro. 
just because it has a bigger battery life and I expect it to consume about the same level of battery at any given point. With that said, I know there's been a lot of swirl around battery life on the Note Air 3C. Definitely not as good as the black and whites. I haven't had as bad of a battery life issue, I think, as many, um, but battery life is the thing to watch out for with these two devices. With that said, at this point, I don't think the battery life difference is gonna make the difference. I think it's what is your primary use case? Are you primarily writing and you want a lightweight, uh, easy device to carry around? Or do you want a computer replacement when on the go? I think that decision is gonna ultimately dictate which of these two devices feels more right for you. As far as the Tab Ultra C versus Tab Ultra C Pro, I think if you're sold on what the Tab Ultra C is, then this is the one to get. They've improved this folio um, enough that I have a hard time recommending the other one when this one exists. So those are initial impressions. I'm obviously gonna dig a lot deeper for a final review, but hopefully that gets you on the right track when orienting between Tab Ultra C Pro, Note Air 3C, and Tab Ultra C. Thanks for watching. Cheers.